Welcome to the complete collection of Steve Nash's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. If you have missed any of the other episodes within this series, there is a playlist link on the top right of your screen and in the description box down below. Thank you to everybody that mentioned I should do a video on Steve Nash. This is for you. If you enjoy these episodes, it takes me a long time to edit and produce them, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button to show your support. Subscribe if you are new and hit that notification button so you stay up to date with all the new episodes. And comment down below which player would you like to see next. I won't keep you waiting. Without further ado, here's the complete collection of Steve Nash's greatest stories. A lot of people don't know, Steve is cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah. and that helped, that helped with the team chemistry. He carved a, and revolutionized the way a point guard plays the game. My eyes, like right there, I was like, okay, like now I run through a brick wall or anybody trying to mess with Steve, they're gonna have to see me. You know, my rookie year, we played you guys. First time we played you guys, and I've seen the passion. Like, like Steve Nash just won two, you know, MVPs in a row. And your team was one of the best in the league. First game, he took a charge and just got up screaming, pumping his chest. I'm like, man. This guy really won it. I'll say it because I believe it. I think Steve Nash is the best passing point guard that I've seen. He has some phenomenal years. Phenomenal years, man. Just a testament to his hard work. He had eyes in the back of his head. The passes, the shooting, just very, very basketball survival. He just told himself, hey, you're going to do what he does. And, you know, the results speak for themselves. He's giving back to the game as much as he needs to change the game when he was playing. I don't have time here to describe Steve and how good Steve Nash was, man. I mean, in, in, in such a short interview, that, that's not possible. I need maybe like two or three days. Because well, you, you, you played against each other many times. Chris, what do you remember about the first time you played against Steve? <laughs> the first time? Yeah. Um, he probably don't remember, but I remember. I couldn't sleep the night before the game. Such a really? Liar. I'm dead serious. Really? Oh, not on that type liar. stuff. Relax. Not on <laughs> that type. But it was just... Like, this was, like, the pinnacle of point guards, you yeah. know what I mean? So, for me, I remember we played in Baton Rouge because the hurricane had hit. We played in Baton Rouge. Um, I was in New Orleans at the yeah. time. And I couldn't sleep the night before the game because, like, I just wanted to kill him. <laughs> like, I, wanted to kill him. <laughs> I wanted because he was, you know, how you measure yourself. And I just, yeah. I just remember. Sure. 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 Man, two-time MVP, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I'm coming in. I was in college. And my college coach used to give me like little DVDs of Steve playing in the pick and roll and all that stuff like that. So really? Now I'm in the NBA and it's like, I gotta see what all, this, all of this is about. I knew it. Just like I knew it with Jason Kidd. I think Eric Snow should be a head coach. But I knew it with Steve Nash. Like, uh -huh. I knew it because he has so much to offer to our sport because he's excellent, he's a great person. I never had the luxury of being around him a lot, but just hearing stories from other Everybody guys. Everybody fuck with him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody. And off the court, off the court, Steve was one of the homies, man. Steve was Steve going to the clubs yeah. with us. We've been to clubs. You know, we go to the, you know what I'm saying, to the vibe clubs. You feel what I'm saying? We're like, hold on. Man, Steve, Steve, what you doing in here, hey, man? Hey, Steve, hey, Steve, is <laughs> hey, Steve is comfortable in there. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, Steve, so, hey, a lot of people don't know, Steve is cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah, and that helped, that helped with the team chemistry, too, man. Like, we saw Steve in the spots where we hung out at, and he came and hung out with us and kicked it with us for a little bit. And then the next day on the court, we like, man, listen, we got even a better, stronger bond now. Yeah. So it became more of a family atmosphere. It's a recipe mm -hmm. for greatness. Yeah, it's going to be great for Kyrie. It's going to be fun to yeah. learn from Steve, play with oh, KD. Steve gave me the most problems. Steve was just a headache because he could do it. He could do it all. Like you talk about dropping the player off in today's game. Like if, if he played where where point guards could could shoot first and shoot threes and do that, and Steve could average 30. You know, the way I would have played today would be so different from the way I played. I grew up playing the game where people told you, as a point guard, go five for seven, seven for ten, right. and get a all your teammates involved, loving the game, feeling empowered. That's the way I approach the game. So I got more aggressive in the fourth quarter because I'm trying to win the game, but I didn't come out like guns blazing, try to, you know, you know, get 20 in the first half because I didn't think that would do my team any favors. Now we know numerically it just makes way too much sense. Stevie, Stevie was that, he shot the ball that great. Like I, I promise, I, I, me and my friends, we talk about it from time to time. And I say it's never really a time where when Stevie shot the ball, I always felt like it was going in. Like, he shot that well. Like, even though he didn't shoot a lot, like, whenever you watch Stevie shoot, 
Stevie could shoot the hell out of the ball. I think I was too conservative shooting the ball. Like I should have walked into way more threes. I should have looked for more threes. If it was today, would have, no question. But yeah. at that time, it was, you know, taking bad threes was kind of like a cardinal sin. Yeah. Now it's like, you know, I think it's gone too far. We take too many bad threes. I'm all for take a lot of threes, but I think those open mid-range shots are what give you better quality threes. His numbers were always high and efficient, you know what I'm saying, percentages and all that. Like, he could score if he wanted to. He just was selfless. He wanted to, to pass the ball, and he he enjoyed getting getting everybody involved. That was what that was his, like, his, his special move. People who don't know, who haven't ran across you, you're not that big, and you were playing against the Giants your whole career <laughs> and doing a great job at it. So talk to us about yeah, your uh, your you. mental, physical preparation to, 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 to have that he kind of He was just crafty. He, he had Very. to be crafty. Crafty. That's another word for white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I, I, I was. I was hella white, too, but... Uh, Without he, being fast. Didn't have it. John Stockton move. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just Smart. right here, just... Smart. You know what I mean? Just know how to get it done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Steve was just... Steve was excellent, man. About... Three weeks into my first season, I got to play for Danny Ainge. Man, yes, man, that was fun. That was fun. He taught us to have no fear, and he certainly didn't because he played me, Jason, Kevin Johnson, and Rex Chapman at the same time. I, re I, re I remember playing one-on-one. -on -one. Danny had recently retired, and we'd be playing one-on-one -on -one almost every day before practice. And we're battling. And he looks up at the clock and he's like, what time is it? It's seven minutes after when practice should have started. He goes, look, yells down the other end of the court, where is everybody? Someone goes, I don't know. He turns, throws me the ball, and goes, check ball. <laughs> we kept playing. It's, 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 fun. it's fun to beat your coach in one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> you can't say anything, so... And, I think it got me some playing time, though. Hey, no, nobody, a lot of people don't know, Steve, that you was my vet for a couple weeks. Until That's I got right. cut. He yeah. said a couple I mean, weeks. You know what, though? Was, <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, drafted if, by the Suns, man. I got drafted by the yeah, Suns. Yeah, I remember, I remember, it, I remember. But you know, you know what? It feels like way more than a couple weeks, because weren't we there, like, all summer? Yes, we were working out there all summer. Yeah. So like we were, we might have only spent like two or three weeks as teammates, but we were, you know, we were worked out all summer together. And, and man, that was fun. We had a, had a great time, and you know, getting to know you and being two younger guys trying to trying to make a name for ourselves. Uh, spending that summer working out with you is something I'll never forget. Hey, but I, I tell people this all the time, Steve, and I said it on this show before. And it's something that you told me my rookie year. I don't know if you remember this, and it helped me not only today in life, but it helped me get through basketball through my career. And even even when I have such situ situations that I'm going through, I think about this. You told me, hey Jack, whatever you do, don't worry about just keeping it real. Also, keep it right. You told me that my rookie year before I even got a chance to set foot in the league, and I remember that to this day, bro. And I thank you for giving me that game because I held on that all all this time through everything I've been through. I'm glad I gave you something. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, you only, you, only, you, only, you only lasted two weeks, but uh, somehow you came back around yeah. and had a hell of a career. That's yeah, funny. man. Thanks. Hey, you meant you mentioned Hello White earlier, but I think you got your black card the one time you were up on stage and Nicki Minaj gave you that uh, lap dance at her concert. What was, <laughs> what was that like? Um, that was that was uh, a unique experience to say the least. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm also gonna say I, it was so, I would have too. Sort of, yeah. sort of, sort of unfulfilling now. <laughs> a, little, a, a, little, a little bit of a tease, huh? <laughs> oh, oh hell yeah! Oh, that's funny. What could you guys have developed into had you played together longer? Because it was a lethal combination. Nash blows by Anderson. I mean, it would have been fun for sure. I mean, one, you know, you, you, you know, you being there and being, yep. we've been friends our whole life. Yep. Two, you we were my best friend in the league and my best friend at the time because we were, 
you know, there together. So just socially, it would have been awesome. Dirk and I came there as like guys that people were really unsure about. Yeah. I, I was traded there. The day I came for my press conference after the draft, Dirk came too for his. He was the first pick, whatever. I can't remember. He was like picks like seven, eight, nine, or whatever it was. And so we did our press conference together. I think that kind of was, was a little lucky on draft night when when they got both of us at the same time. Didn't both of y'all have like blonde hair or so something no, like that? Dirk is blonde. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I had. <laughs> well, you had blonde hair. Okay. So my brother and I, that summer, I was still in Phoenix, <laughs> like bleached our hair completely blonde like being idiots and uh <laughs> and so of course by the time like a month or two later the press conference i was halfway back to normal yeah. and i had like frosted tips <laughs> but justin i didn't go in like i didn't justin go like frost my vibe. tips i just didn't like <laughs> <Little insane. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so i i i was at one point like totally uh blonde and then I went to the press conference looking like an idiot. I thought he was a weirdo, you know, who, with bad hair. Uh, but we started hanging out. He took me out a little bit, and I could just see, you know, this is a guy that's uh, going to help me out a lot, not only on the court but off the court. And so I ended up taking an apartment in in the same apartment complex where he was living, and that ended up for me being the best thing ever. I was a little homesick every now and then, miss Germany, miss my family. And, um, but he was always, he called me, hey, come meet my friends. My crazy Canadian friends are in town. Uh, they want to take you out. I appreciated him a lot for what he did for me early and for a long, long time. He was my best friend. The Mavs were like, we need him. Let's get him over here. Let's get him assimilated and develop him. Whereas from his perspective, it was like, hold on. I just, I just broke onto the scene. Like I, I'm on my mom's cooking. <laughs> I right, want to like right, right. play for my local yeah. team. And so they're like recruit him. So like I I tried to like encourage him. I mean, more so like you have a friend here. I have a friend. His name is Sammy. Byron. He is so nice, and we all love him. Love him. We have been friends for about eight years. Yeah. I had a few laughs about nine thousand beers. Your turn. You know, we both came to a new city. We both live in the same apartment complex and. We hung out, you know, we didn't really know anyone else, so we became friends. I don't know if he can I'm be pretty a much player. an all-rounder. I mean, I can pretty much play hockey to soccer or whatever, tennis. Just let me know, give me the stick, and I'll play hockey pretty much. What did you say? Not much. Not much. He, he's a good tennis player. Excellent tennis player. Let's leave it at that. Steve was huge for, for my development, really, you know, trying to give me confidence even after bad games, trying to talk to me and helping me off the court. We can't all have beautiful hair like Dirk. Take me out of the hotel and, and so I'm not being homesick all the time. That shot. That was terrible. Right. I'm going through this too. I'm just moving here. If you come here, I'll be here yeah. to help you like learn the culture and the league, yeah. and and so in a sense, he, he, I don't want to like make in any sense like this to sound. You know what I mean? Right. I was like a big brother in a sense, like yeah. by you know, like but I was still like trying still to figure young. it out myself. They brought in a new point guard. They gave him a, a nice contract, and he wasn't producing. You know, the fans they were disappointed. They booed him in our own gym every time he touched it. And I remember sitting on the floor, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty messed up. This is embarrassing. Fans are booing. Every time he touched the ball in his home jersey in Dallas, he was getting booed. And it really bothered him a lot. It was tougher as a friend than as a teammate because I know the injuries that he was trying to play through. I just felt bad when the, the crowd was booing him because they didn't know the whole story. They just saw a guy come from uh, Phoenix, get a lot of money, and who wasn't uh, producing to what his contract was saying. There was a lot of frustrations, I think, on, on both sides. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have to go to rock bottom, you know, to, to push through and believe in yourself. I just knew that that day would come when those same fans that was booing him would be cheering for him.
we remember him now as like this, sh- like w- not only a great player, but like a sh- killer at the end of games. Right. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah, closer, yeah. right? He wasn't, that wasn't his personality at first. He had to overcome with a lot of hard work and like, you know, he grew into that. Like when he first came here, he'd be like, wh- like he'd say stuff. And I know he's exaggerating, but he'd be like, what are we doing here? Like, you know, like a couple of white stiffs, like we're going <laughs> to get our ass kicked. You know what I mean? And I'd have to be like, dude, like just, you're good. You're good. Like, yeah. Just stay with it. And I know some of it was just him like vent, you know, like he's a long way from home and all this stuff. But he literally went from that kind of mindset to like, give me the ball. Yeah. Don't worry. It's over. <laughs> like, yeah. like legit yeah. Yeah. against anybody. Right. Yeah. So like, no matter who going. Right. What do you think would have happened if uh, I had a re-sign with the Mavs? 2004. See, I'm not sure whatever would have happened. I mean, obviously, people ask me that sometimes, and, and you think about it a little bit, but, you know, some people say, hey, look, it was good for our careers to be apart, yeah. to grow yeah. uh, without each other. Um, I'm not sure it would have been a hell of a time, though. I know that. I mean, on the one hand, like, I feel like we would have gone on and won a championship because you did it without me. And I think at least in one of those two years, that could have helped. And so a part of me is like, yeah, we both grew in different ways and better ways because we were apart. But part of me thinks like we would have won for sure. It's, it's weird to think about. When it all like, you know, shook down, obviously he found his position and became what he became. But, you know, from the start, it was like, um, you know, two young guys just trying to make it and pushing each other and going to the gym twice a day, yeah. mm. right? Like we, we lived in the same apartment complex. You know, two single guys like go into gym in the morning with like the team. You know, mm. like you go and like maybe a little bit of like yeah. in the off season you go and like you hit the strength coach a little bit, then you get on the court, then you play pickup. And, yeah. you know, it's still kind of you know. But then we would come back at night and play one on one horse and like mm-hmm. push each other yeah. like whatever maybe conditioning whatever like that was the ba- like the foundation i think of like our relationship but also our growth right yeah. we needed that we needed to go back push and each other push and like not just to believe deeper yeah. but to also get better dirk and i joining the worst team in the league we're barely nba players we we pushed each other I can't remember how many times Dirk and I went back to the gym every night, one-on-one, horse, conditioning, pushing each other. Many times I had to convince him how good he was. But together with Mike, leading us, teaching us, allowing us to surpass him at some point, it was an incredible time in my life. I'm forever grateful. I remember watching film one night with Nelly after we lost. We had the whole team in there. Actually, we won this game, but, <laughs> but Nelly was pissed. And he, he was telling us, showing us how we laid an egg. You know, and Dirk and I were just starting to become good NBA players. But I had to continually convince Dirk that. I think he still thought like, no, we, I don't know that we can make it in this league. And so he's showing, Nelly's showing the fourth quarter and we're cutting corners, not moving the ball, lazy. And late in the game, I beat my man, got in the lane and scored. And Nelly goes, well, sometimes talent wins. Dirk looks at me and goes, talent? I mean, it was funny, but it kind of pissed me off. I always thought that if that team I was together for an extended period of time that we would at least have one championship uh, in Dallas. I always think sometimes what could have been if Steve would have stayed here. Unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. You know, yeah, the Spurs are always great, but I think there were a couple years there that would have been, it would have been up for the grabs and we would have been right there. And, and who knows, maybe we would have won multiple, right? Like, who knows what pieces and what happens. But the night that, that, that me and Steve Nash were set to sign, like after, actually, you know, after, you know, how you have that waiting period after you agree to terms, it's like right. a week or so, and then you get to sign. So we there, 
it's like midnight. We waiting for we get there before midnight because at midnight you can sign and everything. So we in the office is uh, David Griffin and, and Rex Chapman and uh, our assistant GMs and Brian Colangelo was was the uh, Colangelo was the, was the GM. Mm-hmm. So we we in there waiting and it's kind of you know we looking at Sports Center and office and everything. It's starting to take a little long and we like man what's going on and so you know the salary cap was projected to be one thing, but when they actually released it, it came in lower than what it was projected. So that meant that one of us had to take less money on our contract. I mean, and Steve and that we sitting in there chilling, we waiting, waiting, waiting. And then it's like, man, what's going on? It's taking a long time. So then Rex comes in and, and you know, they kind of start explaining it to us. And then everybody, everybody sitting there and no lie, this is how great of a person Steve is. Like he, no second guessing, no thought. He was like, once he, once we all figured out what was going on, he was like, if that's what's going on, man, just here, just like we ain't me, and just take it off mine and, oh and put my it God. on cues. And I turned and looked at him like, you know, I didn't like at this point, I don't know Steve like that personally. I know him from competing on the court and, you know, being cool in that way, but I don't even really know him past that at all. So it was mm-hmm. like for him to do something like that. I wish I really remembered how much money it was. It wasn't like a lot of millions, but it was definitely over a million dollars. And for him to do something like that, just without even thought like that, that right there, set the tone for how selfless he was in my eyes. Like right there, I was like, okay, like now I run through a brick wall or anybody trying to mess with Steve, they gonna have to see me. So it was like right there, just just set the tone of how he would be, you know, the whole season long right there. You know, my rookie year, we played you guys. First time we played you guys and I seen the passion. Like, I'm like, Steve Nash just won two, you know, MVPs in a row. You know, her team was one of the best in the league. First game, he took a charge and just got up screaming, pumping your chest. I'm like, man, this guy really won it, you know. And that, and that's, you know, coming from, you know, where you come from, and people, un, you know, slighted you for so long, you could just tell that you was letting it out. Like, man, I'm here now. I can tell. And that, you know, as a as an 18 year old, that spoke volumes to me because I'm like, damn, if he can do that, you know, I can. Where I come mm. from, where you know, basketball is like. Everything, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I felt that I had to push myself even harder after seeing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. What was it like building chemistry with Steve on the court? On and off the floor, excuse me. Yeah, you know, on the court, man, it was um, it was easy, bro. I mean, it was, it, it, was, it was an easy deal for us because Nash and I, you know, it happened organically. You know what I'm saying? Nash was a pass first point guard, and I was a player who wanted to set the tone and try to dominate every chance I got. You know what I'm saying? So anytime, anytime Nash dropped the ball off to me, I'm catching flight in flight range. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. And so and I'm and I'm attacking the rim. So it's, it wasn't like I'm going in there and trying to draw fouls or shoot floaters and lay the ball up. Nah, you wasn't doing that. You know that what I'm saying? I'm, atta- I'm, I'm attacking the rim. And so every time Nash drop him off, you know. It's like it's like an easy combination between him and I. So when you got that type of combination going, and then teams got to respect that, and you surround that with some shooters and a few playmakers, you got a great formula. Well, that leads me to my next question. How fun was it once everybody vibed? Obviously, your and Steve's was effortless and, and most important. But like you said, you got you know Sean Marion, Joe Johnson, Quentin Richardson, Barbosa. You guys got a real squad. Whenever we played y'all, we knew we were in for a motherfucking track me war but what was it how how fun was it playing with that group of guys yeah for sure every time we played y'all go to state boy we had to, we had to make sure you strap up you know what i'm yeah, saying that's gonna be hot yeah, i did give you a, a 30 point triple double i should yeah but, <laughs> but they tried to put us on him we all had to go out of the yeah, oh, hey, yo, yo, shit. Yo, <laughs> that shit. worse bro. but look hey but look hey but let me hey, hey i remember this though so look this is what happened right they started a donald foil right so some kind of thing happened on a fast break where you dunked on O'Donnell so bad. <laughs> Nelly didn't play him no more and just let me and Matt deal with you the rest of the game. <laughs> Nelly didn't even play him no more, dog. Yeah, man. Nelly was like, at least file him. O'Donnell, you the biggest guy there. At least file him, yeah, bro. Man. And it ended his time. Man, I was taking, I was, man, I was no mercy, bro. I was playing <laughs> with no mercy, man. Steps in front for the ball. Murphy had the ball. Stoudemire with the dunk. Shoved off with a free arm and sent it home. A five-point game. Amari Stoudemire's going to come into your living room. Who's today is John Stockton? Mm. I think as long as he's playing, Steve Nash is as close as you're going to get to what John Stockton was about. I mean, the consistency in terms of shooting the basketball. Steve is 
one of the game's greatest shooters of all time. John Stockton, consistently a 50% shooter, a playmaker, an assist maker, but, I mean... I don't see that. You don't think... I don't, as be, much. Be, because, only, of, because of the offensive end of the ball? I, I think... Because of the willingness to score? I think John Stockton, to me, played free throw line in. Like, he really penetrated the basketball free throw line in, where Steve Nash goes plays free throw line out. He's really a three-point shooter. Well, now you're going to go into system, though, because one guy was locked into Jerry Sloan's half-court offense where it was he, he got run, paint, select, run selectively in advance with the pass, which is something that I think that's one of the biggest things that Steve and John share is the willingness as a point guard to advance right. I agree with on the that. pass and play. But their system... But I wouldn't play and, if, and I, if, if, like if, if... I don't know, Steve, Isaiah, if you were guarding them. My first thing would be make Nash drive. My thing with Stockton would be make him shoot from the outside. So I would think of them, I would be playing them totally different. Like, I, would, I wouldn't want Steve Nash to be a jump shooter. I would say I want to get him in the lane. Or you'd say help if there was a pick and roll. Company. Oh, pick and roll. Help, no help, help. <laughs> you know, I, I... Uh, Kobe, welcome to Sports Center. Let's start with your newest teammate out there in L.A. You've got an all-star point guard now in Steve Nash. How excited are you this deal was able to get done? Well, I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, he's, uh, you know, we all know what a phenomenal player he is and how intelligent he is and, you know, what he brings to the table with his shooting and his playmaking ability. So I'm excited. I mean, he's going to space the floor. I mean, he's such a phenomenal shooter. And then, you know, his ability to, to make plays for others is second to none, really. And, uh, you know, so we'll be able to get up and down the floor and hopefully, you know, get a lot more easier baskets than we have in the past. Uh, we won't have to grind as much as we did in the past in terms of trying to get good shots in the half court. Well, it was a thrill to be his teammate, but, uh, you know, if I look back and remember Kobe, I'm going to think about the competition, and that was special for me in my career to face the ultimate competitor, one of the greatest players to ever play the game. We go way back. We were in the same draft class. It is the 1996 NBA draft. Leading up to the draft, you're, you're looking at the uh, the whole pool of players and we start to zero in on Steve as a, as a possibility with the 15th pick. Um, our first intent, you know, to be perfectly honest, was uh, to go after Kobe Bryant. You know, that was the guy we had targeted. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. You know, the, the, the fact that we came into the league together, you know, in 96, and, you know, there's really not too many other players from that draft kind of still going. So I, I think kind of that bond that we've had since the 96 draft, you know, kind of supersedes the rivalry that we had against, uh, against Phoenix. Talk to touch baseline. Kobe Bryant at the buzzer. Oh, he it! Right between the eyes. Practice it. Third, Nash. Fouled, count it. He is some player. He is some basketball player. Nash has 10 assists over Brown. Nash from the floor tonight has shot over 70%. 8 of 11. Kobe. Oh, what a shot by Kobe Bryant. The shot clock again goes down to deep single digits at 2. Kobe. Come on. Oh, that is how way too good. I mean, you can't guard that. <laughs> You know, as a coach, all you're saying is if one of these misses, the game is over. That goes in, you have to make two free throws, and then this goes in. If that shot misses, you rebound, and the game is over. And Nash needs to make both of these. They have answered that as well. 22 of 26 for the game. And as the story goes, we, we played our whole careers in the West. We played each other three times in the playoffs, had some epic battles, uh, weren't always friends. We're lucky to be teammates. Probably hated each other at times, but through it all, had a tremendous amount of respect for each other. And I remember after we beat him in, I think, 06 in the playoffs, um, we were at a Nike shoot together. And he came to me and he said, how do you trust your teammates? And I, I thought, inside, I, I thought, first of all, that's, that's, a, that's a sign of respect. And I thought to myself, with a smile, well, I have to trust my teammates because <laughs> I ain't anywhere near the player you are. So for me, I need the whole pie. You, you can decide it's time and, and, and decide the game. But when I walked away from the conversation, I have to admit, I was he Jedi mind tricking me or was he telling me 
just so we're clear on the ledger, you had a better team. <laughs> right. I love this about Kobe Bryant. I love <laughs> this about Kobe Bryant. You know, it was, it was, uh, when I got to play with Kobe for, uh, you know, uh, a few, you know, we didn't get to, we both got hurt, but having to share the locker room with him at the end of our career, it, it was an eye opener in a sense, because you forget we got drafted together. We played against each other our whole careers. You know, you th I thought of him as a competitor. Uh, I thought of him as, as the competition, you know, predominantly. So when I came to the Lakers and you could see the, like, the, the worship that young players had for him, you know, it was an eye opener because I never had that perspective of him, but that's exactly how I was with Jordan. Steve, let me ask you first of all, what the hell is going on with your eye? <laughs> let me see that eye. It's getting better. When you saw him, Grant, leave the floor, and you think about it, your chances in the playoffs are so short, and now you see him going to the locker room with one eye closed. What went through your mind? Well, I was thinking back, I guess, three years ago, uh, watching on television uh, the Suns and Spurs game one and Steve getting cut on the nose and uh, <clears throat> not being able to get back in the game, and especially when San Antonio went on that 11-0 run when Steve went out. Uh, the other day in game four. So I was certainly a little worried, um, you know, and I was kept saying, what's taking him so long, you know? <laughs> but thankfully he did come back and uh, played great. So That's I right. knew you Canadians were crazy. You know, <laughs> from, looking at that, from looking at that eye. And I, Maybe saying, you should play with a patch. You played pretty good with one eye. <laughs> lucky. Both of y'all are liars, man. Shouldn't have won one? What are y'all, well, over Kobe? Should not have won the... Hell yeah, over Kobe. The Kobe one, yeah, sorry. Kobe? Kobe. We, we giving MVPs to seven seeds now? Eight seeds? That's what we doing? He was a... Steve Nash was an eight seed almost his whole career. Not when he won MVPs? He never won a championship. Has he been in... How many times has he been in the finals? The MVP ain't giving you... How many times has Steve been in the finals? Who cares? No, I'm just asking you. Who, you, you know the I'm answer. just asking you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Never. So? That don't mean nothing. He's not no MVP. You're a good point guard. Ray for Austin played in the finals. Didn't that make him MVP? But, come on now. I'm just saying. They gave Steve two MVPs. They didn't give him. He won two MVPs. What? They didn't give him. He won that. <laughs> because they put him out there with four dudes. So you're telling me just, Steve Nash was the best in the NBA in two years in a row? Yes. 100%. <laughs> First of all, shout out producer Danny and producer Steve. Boy. That boy, actually running that sound boy. would be a good idea. <laughs> Producer Mahmood, who put all of those very important yes. leaps over you. This was during one of the commercial breaks yesterday during our show debate over whether Nash deserved his second MVP in 06 over Kobe. Do any of you have any follow up thoughts before we move on? I love Steve Nash. Like I told you, you know how I feel. Steve Nash is my guy. He was my vet when I got drafted. I love Steve Nash. But I just don't feel he was the best in the league those two years. Um, that's, that's just what it is. I mean, he, he, I'm happy he got him, I'm proud of him, but I just feel like Kobe should have got it. I, I think what people miss is because he didn't average 35 a game, that means he wasn't best in the league. Steve Nash showed everybody that there, basketball, there's more to it than just getting, getting buckets. And when you look at what the team did when he played versus when he didn't play, we were the best team in the league when he played, and when we didn't play, we were a lottery team. If that ain't most valuable, I don't know what is. Don't you think part of the complication here, too, is that it's not specifically, OG, oh, did Steve deserve two MVPs, but people feeling like Kobe deserved more than one in his career? And the idea that, the idea that Kobe Bryant is only a one-time MVP, the, something had to be wrong, and one of those had to be his. That, that ain't, that's not Steve's fault. That's not Steve's fault, but Steve's fault. she makes a lot of but, sense. But, but, no, but no, no, but we can't, we can't sit here and start <laughs> to count how many MVPs everybody not got. Like, oh, he should have had more MVPs. Shaq only got one MVP. You think Shaq's a one-time MVP? Steve probably stole one from Shaq. Come on, man. Nash beat me out twice for MVP. I still don't know how. How about Allen? <laughs> kid. AI. Yeah, ooh. J hey, Shaq. J kid. Do you need to get on the couch now, too? <laughs> uh, actually, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Get up for a second. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Put an extender on here. Put the extender on there, Brad. Right. 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 <laughs> 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 Dr. O'Neill, yes, hold, sir. Do you want what to hold seems, the seat? Don't touch the toes. Right. <laughs> what seems to be your uh, 
your overriding concern today. <laughs> what is your issue? What would you like to get off your chest? It was this little good-looking David Beckham little guy running around <laughs> like a gnat, just passing the ball to people <laughs> and doing this and doing that. He scored every now and then, but oh, he would always beat me out in the MVP voting. And I'm averaging 28-15 <laughs> without the free throws. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you not, and I'm going to the finals every year. Do you, uh, do you not feel that, you, that uh, Steve Nash deserved the award at all? There's not a part of you that says, yes, Steve Nash deserved the award for the following reasons. Maybe once, but not twice over the diesel. Twice, two times in a row. He got two, I got one, Kobe got one, something wrong with that picture. <laughs> Whatever else? camera you're using, throw it away. Get a new camera. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like to show your support, subscribe if you are new, and hit that notification button. Comment down below which player you would like to see in the next episode, and I'll catch you guys there. I'm out. Peace.